Hi, welcome back for part two. Why women gain weight after menopause and have twice the incidence of dementia as men. And of course, what to do about it. If you haven't watched part one, you might want to head over to our channel at youtube.com forward slash keto naturopath um, to get that in. Otherwise, let's get started. All right, so phosphatidyl, here's your pimp. So your pimp comes in. Estrogen drives this, and there you go. You get to make your choline, and away it goes. Choline, beta-ene, the whole thing. It helps with methylation, folate pathway, and all good things. But if you have a SNP, it's useless. So you're out of the game. It's a big deal. Easy to treat, but you got to find out that that's what your situation is. By methylating, PEMT, PEMT makes building blocks of all cell membranes, phosphatidylcholine. PC, phosphatidylcholine, accounts for approximately 95% of all choline in the body. Okay, summary of the PET and choline deficiency. In humans, choline is only made by PET enzymes. Estrogen is required for the PET enzymes to activate and function functioning normally, function normally. Men and postmenopausal women have an elevated risk of choline deficiency due to low estrogen. So the postmenopausal are kind of like the equivalent to men, right? And assuming that they have low choline deficiency already. PEMT enzyme is commonly slowed down by polymorphisms, making it unresponsive to estrogen levels. 74% of women have at least one copy of a slow PEMT. Homozygous carriers of PEMT have much higher risk of choline deficiency, as I told you. Men, postmenopausal women, and premenopausal women with PEMP SNPs need to increase choline intake in the diet to stave off elevated risk of liver dysfunction. Okay, here's hot flashes in methylation. This comes back in 2013. This basically says, hey, take folate and you'll do better. I'm going to show you why these are interconnected. And the title of the article is Folate Supplementation, a New Dawn for Postmenopausal Women with Hot Flashes. Okay, abstract. Choline is required nutrient with roles in liver and brain function, lipid metabolism, and fetal development. Recent data suggests that choline requirements may be altered by these particular two. So we have two PEMPT SNPs, right? That's the one I'm homozygous for. And there's another MTHFD1, another SNP. So these together are bad news. This controlled feeding study, what it did was, it from 2000-2001, examined the effects on these two SNPs, on biomarkers of choline metabolism. So what it did, it gave them choline. Everybody had choline for the whole study, but it gave them folate, and then it didn't give them folate to find out what changed. So after a seven-week period of folate restriction, and then they gave them folate treatment, what was the difference? Throughout the 14 weeks, they gave them choline, so that wouldn't be an issue. What they found is during the folate treatment, there is no effects of any type. So folate and choline are necessary. Choline without folate was a problem. So these polymorphisms up here modulate, regulate the choline status when folate is restricted. So when would folate be restricted? Well, to slip into another topic into the future, folate is either your diet is devoid of it or alcohol depletes your folate. So that's why we talk about uh, fetal alcohol syndrome when the mom was drinking is that she put the, it's a folate deficiency in the choline. Have, they have to have enough choline to sort of back up that deficiency. So they can have one deficiency, but you can't have two. Since most people are already deficient in the United States with choline, they're SOL. Okay. So look at these two mutations. That's what they're looking at here and here, but really there's other things that are involved as well. I'm not going to go too far into this, but genetic variants and phosphatidyl pept and these two PEMPs, uh, these two SNPs that I just told you about, biomarkers of choline metabolism when folate intake is restricted. 2009, so now they're realizing, oh, it's a folate choline thing. You need both. All right, it's important to see that there is a balance in terms of what is required for methylation to function well. Choline on one side with folate and B12 on the other. You know, what are the best food sources for these nutrients? And also know that alcohol depletes folate. So if you're already standard American diet choline deficient and you go through bouts of you like your alcohol, be it wine or whatever, you make yourself deficient of choline, you have opened up Pandora's box of risk. Continuous dynamic balance always, all the time, just because you got one blood test or you did some check and you go, oh, it looks like it's good. By the way, you can't test choline in blood. It's intracellular, as we talked about before. Okay, so choline 
folate B12 methylation controls turning genes on and off. Methylation turning genes on and off. If you can't, if you don't have, you're choline deficient and folate deficient, you are leaving genes on that should be off and turning on genes like oncogenes that should be off. You got a mess on your hands. Some SNPs to check on is what I'm saying. Choline metabolism, PEMP, SAM, and over here, we've seen these before. Methionine cycle, B12 metabolism, folate metabolism, folate cycle. So cancer and choline deficiency, the inverse association between choline intake and breast cancer was confirmed to participants with low folate levels. Choline, so they had low folate, I told you, they already had a problem and they were given choline, it took them, it gave them a buffer, but you need both. Also consumption of choline and betaine, which I told you is a product of choline, is inversely associated with the risk of breast cancer. Kind of saying the same thing, I just went a little further and said betaine as well. So choline is golden and we are a country that's devoid of it. Okay, from clinical studies, uh, women with intervention spent more than 30 to 50 years in hypoestrogenic state postmenopause. Oh, this is, this is advocating for hormone replacement therapy, but in a plant basis. So this is in essence how I got educated as a naturopath was like, oh, uh, hormone replacement therapy was dangerous, but it was the right concept, right? If you could give them enough estrogen, they would have a good life and it would take them out of hot flashes and so on. And certain ch Chinese herbal medicine is a lot about that in a different way, but that's called uh, phytoestrogens and there's a place for that. However, in that context, they don't see SNPs as anything and they don't see the idea of choline deficiency as anything. So I'll just read through. The problem with HRT, hormone replacement therapy, with estrogen and progesterones is it reduces postmenopausal symptoms but increases risks of breast cancer and cardiovascular events. For this reason, they're advocating plant-derived estrogenic compounds mimicking the effects of sex hormones, estrogen, are far better. A couple of things. Uh, if you were talking to somebody who was really professional giving HRT, uh, it has changed a lot. And so now it's bioidentical hormones, which they use in Europe a lot. And government pays for that, by the way, um, in Europe. Pick your country. Here, it's not covered, for one. So these references are towards, or about the older form of HRT. Although no consensus have been reached, most clinical studies show that hormone replacement therapy improves cog cognitive abilities in postmenopausal women. So I'm showing you that it's estrogen. These are obviously women that have got the estrogen or had the estrogen, but if they had choline, sufficient choline, they would not need the estrogen, is my point. But they got the story completely wrong. They left out the part about estrogen and choline and why most people are fine up until menopause, because they can make their own choline. So most people are fine. So when they talk about one size fits all, they talk about all women can make all the choline they want for all of their life. We know that's not true. There are some women that are just, that have those SNPs and they are up a tree and they have a tough time during pregnancy and during the high estrogen years. It's not everyone, but that's what you get in the medical studies. All women, you know, one size fits all. And this is exactly how I was educated. It's unfortunate. Uh, taught that all menopausal concerns, brain fog, dementia, Alzheimer's, postmenopausal, and belly fat and weight gain was solely due to estrogen deficiency. You have to sort of say that that's obviously partly true, but it's not true in the sense of looking at choline. If you had choline sufficiency, estrogen would not be an issue. And that's really what's happening in these last five years. If not the last 15 years would be a stretch. This coming down to saying these SNPs, these women need choline. And then the question is what form of choline is best for them to take it? Will whole food sources like uh, phosphatidyl choline be good enough? Will they need to take a supplement? What kind of supplement? But hormone replacement therapy was potentially very problematic because it increased the incidence of breast cancer and cardiovascular problems. So here we go. This is right from somebody's genomic. So I'm saying you really need to look at your own report. Pay the money, get your report. Your genes aren't going to change. So one and done. Once you got this and you can spend the next five years figuring out what it says, right? But here's a guy and there's another one for women. I just ripped, you know, got whoever I got first. He has problematic genes. Here's the PEMT. He has both homozygous for both sets on this particular two. And these are the ones I just read you. And also he has uh, these are methylfolate, SNP, methylfolate SNPs put together. And over here from another panel called folate panel is these are the other ones I was just telling you about. And he's uh, homozygous over here. And there's a number of variations here. And then he has MTHFR of both. Uh, he's heterozygous for both forms. That's the slow, slow form, the one that I have and the 
less lower form. So he has clearly critical issues of all three, of folate, of B12, and of choline. So what does that look like? Now we look at his particular report. Here's his MTHFR. It's a folate-associated SNP here, MTR. Choline associated over here, PEMT, you saw that. We're keeping it simple here, but folate cycle, methionine cycle, and you can call this the, the choline cycle, if you will. Okay, and here's SAM, which is s methionine. Here's the folate SNPs, here's the choline SNPs here. And when you see purple, it means slow. So this guy was has a slow MTR, and so he's up a tree. Frankly, when I first worked with him, I didn't know as much as I knew now. You know, I think I was just looking at some of these folate SNPs. I didn't really uh, respect the research that much coming from the choline SNPs side of things. Uh, it was a big miss on my part. We're still in touch, so things get better. So here's basically blood work. I'm just saying get your blood work because not everybody's healthy. People call in and say, well, I got this high, I got that high, what should I do? Well, you don't have to make an appointment for the end. This is not you coming to me, but I'm saying you ought to take a step up and start learning about some of your blood work, inch by inch, one little piece at a time, because it can be phenomenal. You want your health or do you not want your health? That's the question. It takes a little work to get your health. So I hope you step up instead of saying, oh, I'm bothered, I'm busy this week. Well, eventually your life's gonna go by as busy. Who is it, John Lennon said, life goes by because you're preoccupied with something else. Time to step up and make this a priority. All right, so metabolic profiling can predict which humans will develop liver dysfunction when deprived of dietary choline, 2010. I, I put this up and this isn't the whole study. This is where it was, a, a research communication. There's one guy here, right here, uh, Stephen Zeisel from the uh, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, that he really has gone deep and he really is the one that in 2006 and perhaps a couple of years before, 2004, that put together these SNPs for women can be really dangerous if they're not aware, made aware of increasing their levels of choline. He's the one that discovered that and now he's gone on and he's the, you know, uh, the state of North Carolina, the University of North Carolina, also Duke and a few others, have helped him create a nutrition research institute on southern part of North Carolina, all about SNPs and nutrition and appropriate products for these particular people. Isn't that interesting? So he's gone big time. He is the center of this and I really appreciate his work. Okay, postmenopausal women at risk for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I hope you know that. This is from 2020. The source is Translational Genomic Research Institute. The summary is, a new review shows that following Following menopause, women are at higher risk of developing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. All women, all women, all women. A chronic condition caused by the buildup of excess fat, not caused by alcohol. But that would make it worse, by the way. Though I will be covering men and their choline-related SNPs problems separately, as well as covering folate, B12 choline-related SNPs, and learning difficulties from aut autism to dyslexia, I want you to do this homework. And this homework is I want you to step up to getting your genomic report done on yourself and your blood work, regardless of your gender, regardless of your age, get it done, know it, begin learning about it. Even if it's one inch every year you're starting, it's ultimately your responsibility to take care of your health. Nobody else will. And at some point in your life, you're gonna realize that. It's not the speed that counts, it's that you are willing to take another step forward and up. Until next time. So if this is something that you're interested in, that is a topic that I obviously go deeper in, in terms of labs, in terms of how to do it, in terms of why you would want to do it, various topics, as you've seen that I've done in the past, then please let me know below in a comment. Till then.